Welcome back, everybody. This is the U Stadium Network. We're here with the newest member of the U Stadium family. That's Glenn. He's now a Panthers mega fan, if you will. He's going to be posting exclusive content on the app. This isn't exclusive content, but you know what it is, banger content. He and I had the idea. We're going to go through every team, all 32 of them, and pick one guy per team that we think – one new addition to that team. So not – not Patrick Mahomes, you know, not Aaron Rodgers. One new player for every team that we think is going to be a difference maker on this team, whether it's offense, whether it's defense, whether it's a, a guy signed in free agency, a guy acquired through trade, or, you know, one of the 259 picks in the draft. I took the AFC. Glenn took the NFC. So let's get it popping. And, absolutely, and absolutely. a guy that I think is maybe not quite as polished as Amon Ross St. Brown, I'm going to go jump over to the – AFC North with the Cincinnati Bengals, one of my favorite guys in the draft, Cameron Sample, a defensive lineman out of uh, either Tulsa or it was out of Tulane. I get the two Mm -hmm. schools mixed up. Out of Tulane, he is not your prototypical edge, but he's a guy with an extremely high floor. He's going to play the run very well from day one. This is what the Bengals – it's one of those things that you don't need to prioritize run defense. Right. But you want players that can defend the run. Sample well, has to I kind of disagree with that to an extent. Uh, being okay. in the position that they're in, because you've got okay, three fair. teams going, you're going against three teams that are going to be run heavy offenses, mm-hmm. you know. So I get prioritizing run defense to an extent. Now, in yeah. general, you do want your you want your pass rushers. You mm-hmm. want to focus on that a little bit more. But I think in that division, I'm that's okay fair. with that. That's fair. I, I think yeah, that's fair. You you compete to win your division first and foremost. That's fair. Um, and Sample is like a pocket pusher type, um, like very Baltimore pass rusher, very, very big, very, you know, like Calais Campbell. Uh, Calais is more of an interior guy now, but like Calais is like 6'7", and he's like a big – he's a big dude push, uh, making getting pressure from the edge when he was in Arizona when his early days in uh, Jacksonville. Mm-hmm. Sample's going to do a lot of the same things, and he's going to be a plus run defender from day one, and you got him in the fourth round. Um so you're not – with run run defense, a lot of it's based on numbers. This is what Buffalo did really well in the playoffs that, yeah, they played Jonathan Taylor and J.K. Dobbins, Lamar Jackson, whatnot. They had a – they were a poor run defense all regular season. And then in the playoffs, they became a competent run defense. Nothing changed personnel-wise. They just – or nothing – no players changed. They just decided, okay, we're going to defend the run a little bit more. <laughs> right. And, yeah, so you're the difference between adding, I don't know, a linebacker. Let's say you have 10 guys on the field. You're choosing between a linebacker and a defensive back. Mm-hmm-hmm. We're going to choose the linebacker for this play. That that can be the difference between a good run play and a bad run play for the offense. Right. Cameron Sample is he's an awesome player, should be a day one starter. I know they they did grab Hendrickson, and they've, they've gotten some edges here and there and there. But he's a guy that should be a first snap of the season. A rundown against uh, who they play week one. Oh, Minnesota. They play Minnesota week one. First play of the season against Dalvin Cook. Cameron Sample should be on the football field. He's that good. Yep. Yep. Um, there wasn't a lot of, of of love for me to give to Cincinnati. Or excuse me, there's not a lot of love for me to give to Cincinnati. I don't like the Bengals front office. I don't like their coaching yeah. staff um, because yeah. they're going to destroy okay. Joe Burrow's career before it begins. I mean, I, I am so – I am just I'm so frustrated at the fact that you had a generational left tackle at Penny Sewell and you pass him up to go with wide receiver Jamar Chase when your wide receiver room is fine. That's fair. Um that's not something that I will forgive Baltimore or Baltimore. That's not something I will forgive Cincinnati for doing. <laughs> You're good. Um, I mean, I would have I would have been able to defend it if they take in Tevin Jenkins in the second round instead of Jackson Carmen. Yeah, instead of Jackson Carmen. Which it's funny because we heard Bengals fans all offseason talking about how, oh, well, we've got Joe Riley Reef. Reef. Gonna be fine. We've got Riley Reef who's gonna be fine. And then they take Jackson Carmen round two, and it's oh well, Jackson Carmen's gonna be great. We don't need Penny Sewell. We got Jamar Chase, blah 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 blah. You could have had Penny Sewell at that spot, and then you could have had him on St. Brown in round two. You could have had any of these guys run two because wide receiver was so much deeper in this draft than tackle was. I mean, my gosh. I just – it frustrates me to no end. So I got no, I got no love for Cincinnati. I don't care Kevin what Jenkins do. was available. Spencer Brown – now, granted, Spencer Brown was a third-round pick, but yeah. you can – 
Carmen was just a reach, and you're going to play him at a different position than he was. He was a left tackle at Clemson. Now you want to play him at guard, and it's yep. you're. I don't. I don't know. I don't know. And yeah. it's just, it was just a weird pick. It's Chase just, is an awesome player, though. Yeah. Well, it's just the kind of decisions that losing football teams make. That's fair. It's, it's a dumb decision that losing football teams make. If mm-hmm. if this had been – if there had been any other sort of coaching staff or front office in Cincinnati, then Penny Sewell would have been the pick no-brainer. It would have been the pick weeks before the draft unless mm-hmm. someone were to just jump Cincinnati or All right. or someone was to take him before. But, but you know, I just I, – Cincinnati That's frustrates fair. me. And, if, and if, I think – it's it's like the Raiders, how they compound their issues. Like they reach on Alex Leatherwood. And then if they had taken someone other than Trevon Merrick, it, it's like the is it the Farrell Jacobs Abram draft. If one of those picks sucks, okay, cool. You have two other first round picks, but all of them are underwhelming. And t- t- flat out, two of the players just don't make sense. And the only, like the I really guess. good player, the really good player there, Josh Jacobs plays running back for a team that doesn't need a running back. And it's just, yeah. it's just I weird. If it was, if it was Chase and Jenkins, I think they both get A's. But if it's Chase and Jackson Carmen, the the process, Chase, slam dunk pick, he's going to be awesome. I know he's going to be awesome. He yeah. might be a top ten receiver year one. He's well, that that's good. Joe Burrow can can survive long enough to get good him the point. ball. You know, it, it doesn't matter who your receivers are if your quarterback is on his ass all year. Fair. So. That that was my that was my whole thing was you know you you focus on the trenches first like you see the lions doing, um, mm-hmm. and then go worry about your wide receivers because it doesn't matter if your guy's a, a generational wide receiver if your quarterback can't mm-hmm. get him the freak 